the time of the month has arrived again. Not like that. Ah, it's a period joke. My protein order has arrived, and this time I have gone bulky to try and actually last me more than a month, because apparently I consume quite a lot of whey protein. But with my protein, obviously you get a lot of these free stuff as well, and I decided to go for one of these oats and whey protein bars, and it's just as well, because I've just done a 12 mile cycle and I've not eaten anything today, so. I am rather hungry, so I'll give this a little taste test. This is the oats and whey protein bar, and it's the raspberry flavor, and this obviously came free with the order. Mmm. Holy hell, that's really good. I don't normally like protein bars, but that is very nice. Overall, it's quite a good bar, especially if you're bulking, so there's quite a few calories in it, but that is incredibly tasty. I've also got some hand sanitizer. As if my protein actually make their own hand sanitizer. So I've also gone for the clear weight isolate, which is something that I normally get as well. I think last time I got it, I got the... Rainbow candy flavor. No, that wasn't it. The... Mojito flavour, that was it. Mojito flavour, and that tasted pretty good, but I wanted to try something different. So I've got the bitter lemon one, so I will do some sort of taste test later on. I'm not going to have this now though. Uh, and I've also got the peanut butter cup whey protein. I've tried that before, so I won't do a taste test for that either. Uh, and I've also tried them as well. But this isn't what this video is about. This video is about the. Sorry. I'm not... <laughs> Uh, it's about Hathor Bjornsson's 501 kilo deadlift, which he is doing in a couple of hours time. So I'm going to be streaming that with my mates on uh, probably Facebook uh, video chat or Zoom, whatever the cool kids are using these days. Um, and yeah, watch that. So my prediction is that I reckon he will definitely get 501. 520 I think is probably going to be a bit of a push, but it'd be amazing to see it. Um, and just my thoughts on whether I think it's a world record. No, I don't. I think it's an unofficial world record, which is still really impressive. Um, yada, yada, yada. Loads of people have talked about that already. So let's get on and watch that. And then I'm going to go over um, some deadlift cues to how to best execute a one rep max. Mm. Right boys, can we have some predictions? First of all, is he going to get 501? Yes. I mean, yes. Yeah. It will be a yeah. speed rep, won't it? Second yeah. question then, yeah. will he get 520? Probably. You think he will? I reckon he's... I don't know yeah, if he's got 520. That's some big, some big yeah. weight. But Eddie's 500 moved quick as well. He had more than 500 on the day as well. So, exactly. I think he will have 501 pretty comfortably, but any more than that, I'm not sure. That was mad. Yeah, there's no way he's getting 520. That was impressive though. There's no way he's gonna try 520 after that. There's no way after you've just done a max lift like that, like you'll be able to get hyped up for 520. Like you've got, you've just used up all your energy. Well, there we go, there we have it. Uh, he got the 501 as predicted. Uh, the 520, um, yeah, he didn't obviously go for that because uh, um, 501 moved a little bit slower than maybe he and some other people predicted. Um, I think it even moved a little bit slower than Eddie's, I don't know, but yeah, just a, a brilliant lift nonetheless. Um, a little bit fast call near the end though when he started calling out Eddie in the ring and that sort of thing, I don't know what that was about. Thought that was a little bit strange, but maybe what that's what all of this banter and everything has been about just leading up to this so they can make a hell of a lot of money. Um, it makes sense kind of. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna quickly talk about um, queuing for a one rep max for us mere mortals that can't lift anywhere near that but um, want to go into the gym and hit a one rep max. I'm just going to go through what I do and just give some advice on how to approach a one rep max and how to execute a one rep max. Oh, okay guys, so I'm actually recording this the day before 
Hathor Bjornsson goes for his world record 501 deadlift and I'm assuming he gets it because by the way his training has been going it looks like he's well on course to absolutely smash 501 and maybe even get 520 so as of right now I don't know if he's got it but I'm going to assume he has but I'm going to quickly talk about um, deadlifting and how to execute a one rep max because ultimately in powerlifting strongman that's kind of what it comes down to is that one rep and this can obviously be used for a squat and bench and other movements as well but it's kind of just talking about the preparation before going into the gym or wherever you're going to go and do that one rep max and that could be obviously in a competition but also could be in the gym because you hit one rep maxes in gyms as well so I'm going to kind of break this down into what to actually do on the day and then um, what to do maybe a few days beforehand and I'm going to sort of say this assuming that you've done your preparation so you've done all of your training so you've followed your program you've maybe hit your penultimate deadlift which is maybe 98% of what you are you're hoping to get something like that and then you're going to do your taper so this is maybe a few days out when you're sort of deloading and resting uh, and then on the actual day of the lift so if we actually start with um, a few days before so if we start with recovery um, and optimizing recovery before the big lift it kind of depends first of all whether you are actually competing in a competition and how close you are to your weight class but if weight isn't an issue then i definitely recommend eating i wouldn't say as much food as possible but maybe a little bit more than what you're normally eating to try and really um, optimize that recovery um, and try and stick to foods that you would normally eat don't start eating some sort of crazy foods that you think is going to help with recovery because your body might not react very well to that so make sure your diet is the same but maybe just try and bulk that food up a little bit just to really try and um, get those glycogen stores nicely topped up and getting you nice and recovered um, the other thing is obviously sleep making sure you're getting enough rest uh, and just resting your muscles ready for that lift um, if you need to have things like um, ice baths or just baths to sort of get your body nice and loose and recovered as well that's uh, obviously optimal um, the other thing I like to do is actually check my hands for calluses so um, making sure that if you've got any calluses which are kind of close to ripping maybe maybe filing them down um, because there's nothing worse than going into a one rep max and then on your warm-ups you tear a callus because I've been there and it just completely throws you off so I think um, the next thing really to do is start visualizing and really um, imagining yourself in the situation of going for that one rep max and being really confident with it um, that's a very very powerful tool being able to visualize what you're doing um, it's what I do before all of my big lifts a few days out I'll actually imagine myself getting the lift um, obviously it doesn't always go according to plan Go on, Matt. Go on. Sometimes things like that are slightly unavoidable. So the other things you can be doing in terms of recovery is doing your mobility work. So uh, making sure that you're mobilizing your joints. If you're a sumo puller, making sure that your hips are staying nice and loose and you're able to externally rotate. I wouldn't go too excessively on mobilizing and stretching because you actually run the risk of overstretching and then the muscles becoming too flexible to a degree. Um, that's very hard to do in a very short period of time anyway to actually increase length of um, muscle that's a whole different topic but um, yeah just not over stretching or over mobilizing you want to try and stick to what you would do normally really and that is something to consider as well is you want to do everything that you have done normally leading up so everything you've been doing in training leading up to this lift try and do it the same but just um, focusing maybe a little bit more on those recovery things so like I said eating maybe a little bit more just to get you uh, nice and recovered maybe trying to rest and sleep a little bit more um, but not changing your routine too much because you want to make sure that when you actually go in on the day of lifting that you're feeling similar to how you would have done previously but just maybe a little bit more recovered so other things that can be done a few days before actually going and doing your one rep max and that is checking your equipment it's such an easy thing to do so making sure if you're going to be lifting with straps that your straps are nice and strong and they're in your gym bag make sure that you've got your belt and that's nicely tightened uh, make sure that if you're going to be listening to music that uh, your um, earphones are nicely charged if they're bluetooth um, it's just making sure that everything in your gym bag that you normally use chalk all that sort of thing is nicely topped up and ready to go so on the actual day you're not going to be stressing that something's either not working or you haven't got something so another thing if you train with training partners and that's something that's important to you and they get you hyped up to lift and that sort of thing maybe arranging with them a few days out and saying i'm going to be lifting at this time do you mind coming in just giving me a little bit of support and just to sort of cheer me on i suppose some people are absolutely fine lifting by themselves and that's great as well so um, you don't have to worry about that but if you are someone who likes um, people helping you out uh, then and you have a sort of squad in the gym I suppose 
then um, yeah, just arranging that with them. So let's talk about the day of the lift and when you're actually going to be hitting the one rep max and how you can best prepare for that. So I would recommend sticking to the same training regime. So if you train in the afternoon, then I would stick to doing the one rep max in the afternoon. There's no point changing it to the morning if that's not what you normally do. Um, obviously, if you're going to a competition, then that's completely out of your hands and you're just going to have to lift when you're told to lift. But in the morning, say you are training in the afternoon, in the morning, make sure you have the same routine as well. Try and get up the same sort of time. Um, keep yourself nicely hydrated anyway. Um, try and eat the similar foods. There's nothing that's going to upset you or make you sort of bloated, that sort of thing. Um, and just try and do everything that you would do normally. Um, and if you can start sort of visualizing how the lift's going to go, so arriving to the gym and it's sort of doing a little bit of mindfulness really and just sort of really visualizing how the day's going to pan out and have confidence when you're doing that so the whole time think i am going to get this it's just a matter of going and doing it and visualize yourself going to the gym going through the doors getting the barbell putting the weights on and working up to that one rep max and visualization is a powerful tool and something that's not really always utilized by people it's something that i definitely do and definitely helps me when i'm going for a big lift and it helps me with lots of things not just powerlifting. if i'm going to a meeting or i've got a presentation to do visualizing how it's going to go is actually a very helpful tool so let's say you've done your morning routine you're now heading towards the gym you're in the gym um, you want to try and find the same platform that you would be using when you've been doing all your training so if you have a favorite platform if you can if it's available i would uh, recommend setting up there and um, get the bar that you would normally use if you have your own bar luckily i have my own power bar i would be bringing that with me and using that um, but if you do have uh, a favorite bar and it is available of course um, then i would recommend using that um, and just obviously do the same warm-up routine that you have done uh, in the whole of your training do not change anything in your warm-up because um, you have the risk of maybe overdoing your warm-up a little bit and actually activating your muscles too much and put maybe a bit too much blood flow into your muscles i think that's one slight mistake that i made when i went for my 300 kilo deadlift and i'm not saying that's the reason i pulled my hamstring i pulled my hamstring because that was just a significant amount of weight over my one rep max but um, if you over um, warm up then that can actually work against you so i just recommend doing what you would normally do so if that's mobilizing your hips um, activating your glutes getting your hamstrings warmed up um, and just generally going through the same warm-up that you would normally do so let's say you've done your warm-up you've done your band work you need to put some weight on the bar so if that's 60 kilo 70 kilo depending on if you use calibrated plates or whatever stick to the same routine that you have been doing in the last sort of 12 weeks before that and stick to the same routine of things like putting your belt on maybe there's a certain weight that you put your belt on so if that's 180 kilos put your belt on then if there's a certain weight where you put your gum shield in if you use a gum shield maybe you're using straps and you use that for 100 kilos do the exact same thing every single time that you warm up it's now started raining oh yeah preferably train in a gym as well and not outside in a gazebo so now you've done a few warm-ups on the bar you're probably getting really close to your final warm-up this is when you want to really mimic exactly what you're going to be doing for the one rep max so if you're listening to music make sure you've got that playlist that you're going to be listening to to get you hyped up that one song maybe listen to that to get you nicely in the zone and it kind of depends what type of lifter you are if you can literally just walk up to the bar and lift it and not really get that hyped up that's that's great but this is the point where um, you're going to have to use all of those cues that you normally use when you're going to be going for a one rep max so if you have a particular song that you listen to get that song on if you have the boys you know hyping you up ask them to sort of get you give you some back slaps and that sort of thing chalk up make sure your hands are nicely ready and this is when you're going to execute your final pull as if it is your one rep max that's going to give you so much confidence for when you then go for the next lift which is your one rep max so now it's time for your one rep max you're going to do everything that you've just done in that previous set your final warm-up you're going to get the boys to hype you up you're going to have your music in whatever it is you would normally do that is what you're going to be doing and the visualization that you've been doing for the last few weeks and the day before everything is now coming into fruition so that's where you need to be um, confident go up to the bar like you've done thousands of times before and get yourself a one rep max So I hope you found that fairly informative. Maybe there's some stuff that you can take away from that, things that you've not tried before when going for a one rep max, or maybe you do all of those things already and this video doesn't really apply to you, but either way, could you leave the video a like, that would be amazing. I'm just gonna sign out the video by giving this bitter lemon clear way isolate a taste test because that's what I've done for all of the other ones that I've bought. 
if I can find the thing. This seems to be the most impossible thing, just trying to find the thing. I always struggle finding my thing. Right, so I'm gonna do two of these, which is about 50 grams of protein. So I'm having this post-workout because I just finished off yesterday's session because I couldn't be bothered to finish off with the rows yesterday, so I did them today. Obviously, need to get nice and strong for when the PGA Tour starts up again so I can kick Tiger Woods off. So that's cricket, but either way, so I can beat Tiger Woods. Does he even play anymore? I have no idea. But anyway, let's give this a taste test. Now we wait and let it settle. Better weather today, wouldn't it? I think that's as good as we're gonna get. Right, taste test time. Mmm, that's really good. I, I'm such a fan of this clear whey I say stuff. It's so much nicer than having like creamy, milky whey protein, just normal stuff. It's literally just like having a fruit juice post training and that's so much nicer for me. I don't like having like really milky products. So definitely recommend this. Obviously not sponsored by my protein, it's just my opinion. Um, yeah, I think so far this, no, I'd say mojito is probably my favorite flavor so far, then this one, and then the rainbow candy one is just way too sweet. But this is a nice sort of in-between, it's sort of a, sweet but because it's kind of bitter as well it doesn't taste ridiculously sweet and it's not just overly sickly uh, all right i'm going to sign out the video now guys i hope you have enjoyed it i hope you've taken something away from it as always please leave the video a like if you've enjoyed it subscribe if you're new and i'll see you in the next one take care